I'm gonna to talk to you about spoke tensions in a dish wheel. So basically a rear wheel or a wheel with a rotor on it. And what the difference is from one side to the other and what effect that has when you're trying to true it. I'm gonna do this both practically and I'm gonna show you the theory as well. Let's have a look at the theory of a wheel spinning around and what happens to the spokes as that's happening. To the classroom and beyond. So if we have a look at this, this orange line is your, your center line down from the rim to the hub. The red line is the dish side, which is steep, when you compare it to the non-dish side, which is the blue one, which is uh, obviously a bit more obtuse. Now the difference in tension on these is approximately double on this side to this side. And, or put simply, if this was a third, this would be two thirds. So any adjustment you make to a spoke on this side by tightening or loosening it, it's going to have a bigger effect on the wheel than what you do on the right hand side or the dish side. And the reason for that is because it's at a lower tension, if you put a quarter of a turn on it or a whole turn on it, it's going to increase or decrease that tension as a bigger percentage of its actual tension that it has already compared to the drive side or the, or the dish side. Here's a top tip for you for when you're uh, truing wheels so that you can keep the wheel um, in the same plane of roundness not putting lumps or dips in it when you're actually trying to move it across from one side to another. The spokes have different amounts of tension on it in, a, in a rear wheel. It's okay like in a front wheel or a wheel that hasn't got any dish in it, um, you know, for a, um, a cassette or freewheel or what have you, or for rotors, you know, for disc brakes. So, but when we're talking about a dish wheel, the spokes are a different tension. You can see by the deflection here, so that doesn't deflect very much. But if I do the left ones, you can see they're much softer. And if you have, actually have a look at the wheel itself, down the bottom here, that's from the left one. And see how much, if I just um, flex those on the left, how much the wheel pulls across. Now look how much that does it when I try and squeeze them even harder, but because they haven't got as much deflection, the wheel doesn't move as much. Well, that's the same when you're truing it. Right, so the gap we've got here is just a couple of mil. So let's tighten up the right-hand side first, the tighter side. Let's see how many turns we have to do to um, get it to touch the... Uh, the feeder on the wheel jig. So let's go half a turn, another half a turn, so that's a whole turn, not really move that much. Another half a turn, so it's a turn and a half, and another turn, or another quarter, sorry, that's a turn and three quarters, and then it's rubbing. Turn and three quarters on the tight side. Now on the loose side, which is much looser, let's see how much it takes there. So we're gonna undo this one instead. So there's half a turn, another quarter, and it's rubbing. So this take took one turn, and this one took one and three quarters. So we loosen that, the one with lower tension, by nearly half and um, got the same result with how far it moved across. Now the reason for that is because with a dish wheel, because these spokes are looser, the amount of um, turns you put on it increases or decreases the tension of the spoke by a, a lot more because it's at a lower tension than it does on the right hand side. So if you think this is like um, two thirds of the tension of that, what you do to it will be about two thirds of the difference one side to the other. Another tip for you, because a lot of people make this mistake, is truing their wheels out of dish. Even if it's not technically a dish wheel with tighter spokes on one side than the other, so like a traditional front wheel, it is still really dished. And the mistake they make is they just true the wheel from one side. There's a, like a sharp lump on one side of the wheel and they'll just take that out and then from the same side they'll find that when they've taken that out there's another one on that side of the wheel and so they'll keep taking them out from one side. And what that's doing as you, as you just take them out of one side is it's allowing the wheel to go across out of dish. Now the way to stop this happening, and the way I do it, I just find which side, whether that be the left or the right, the wheel has the biggest lump on. So the, the, the one that's moving the furthest away from the central line where the dishing is. And then I'll just take that out. And then I'll spin the wheel again, and then if that's then on the other side, I'll go from that side. So what I'm always doing is truing the wheel towards its centre line where you want it in the end. I'm not just truing it one way and ending up chasing my tail. Hopefully now you understand the difference in spoke tension in a dish wheel from one side to the other and what effect it has on each side when you, when you adjust the nipples. Please check out some of my other wheel building pro tip videos and if you enjoyed this one, don't forget to subscribe, give me some thumbs up and leave any comments that you like. Have fun building wheels, get out there on your bike and shred it up.